Okay, okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about the skills and the tools that you will need for today's job market. Um, so, you know, really before we get into the virtual interview, what you need to do um, is prepare for the interview itself. And, you know, you're going to be preparing for the interview in a very similar way if the interview is, um, you know, a in-person interview, a phone interview, or a video interview. And the best way to start preparing um, for that interview is through prep. Okay, so you know, you're gonna research the company and the organization that you're interviewing with. The best way to do that, and there's many ways that you could do that, is you know, online. So you, you know, every company, every organization, every school system, every school district um, has a website. So you want to start you know, basically with the information that they provide to you. Um, so you, you know, you're going to go on their website, you're going to read their company mission statement, um, you're going to understand the clientele, um, the population that they serve. Um, a, a really great tool is um, to review their financials. You can search, you could do Google searches, you know, find news stories about the company that you're interviewing for, find out who you're interviewing with. Um, so another tool that is really crucial um, in the interview process and, and really understanding a company is LinkedIn. Um, so LinkedIn is, you know, a professional networking tool. Um, it's also a job search tool. So if you haven't started the job search process yet, you know, get that LinkedIn profile going. And again, that's something that we can certainly help you with. Um, you know, LinkedIn is a great way to understand the company and the employers that you could potentially be interviewing with. So most people who are in the working world have a LinkedIn profile. The person that you're going to be interviewing with, they will have a LinkedIn profile. So, you know, if you like to snoop, and some of us do, I really like to snoop, um, this is your time to do it. So you can learn about the person that you're interviewing with. Um, find maybe something that, you know, there's a connection um, to you or maybe to your past or to your history or to your education. Um, it would be really interesting, um, you know, what you can find about the people that you're interviewing with. Um, you know, be careful because with LinkedIn, if you're searching for somebody, you know, typically they can see if you're um, being, you know, if you're searching for them. It's a little different than, you know, social media that we're used to. Um, on the professional side, you know, you want to keep your searches limited, but it's definitely a tool where you can really get to know the person that you're interviewing with. Um, you know, newspapers, um, those are, these are really great tools for you to, to get to know a company, okay? So the second part of the interview prep really is getting yourself ready for the interview. And, you know, Brookdale is, is really on the forefront of this in getting our students prepared. Um, and we have a new tool um, that we're offering to students um, and that's called Big Interview. Um, so Big Interview is a software where you can learn um, typical interview questions depending on the sector or the market or the type of company that you're interviewing with. Um, you can practice, so you can record yourself uh, practicing questions, and then you can actually send those little, um, you know, videos. You could either keep them for yourself, you could delete them if you don't want to look at them again, um, or you could send them on to somebody who can help you prepare for the interview. So I just want to show you, um, this is all available on our um, Brookdale Career and Leadership Development website but I wanna show you how to get there real quickly and what big interview looks like and how this can help you in the, in the interview prep process. So again, we haven't really talked about yet, you know, how to prepare for a phone interview or an in-person or a video interview, but this is really preparing for those questions that you could potentially be asked. Um, so I'm just gonna stop sharing this for a second. And I am going to pull up big interview. Okay. Whoop. Can everyone see that? That's um, this is 
Brookdale's um, link to big interview. So you're going to start on our career and leadership development page. So this is just the main page um, for Brookdale Community College. And then once you're in that search Brookdale, you can search career. And this is what comes up. Um, so this is our web page right now, again, offering fully online services. If you go to, and, and, and this is how we are linked, um, you know, social media, professional uh, networking. We have a LinkedIn profile, Instagram, podcast, Canvas. So if you like the information that we're providing for you today, this presentation will be in a Canvas shell that you could simply register for. Um, but it, big interview here is, is what I'm referring to. So you just click on big interview and this is what cups, comes up. So this is me logged on. Um, and this is what your main page will look like when you register for the first time. So you're simply gonna register with your Brookdale email address. Um, so you can start here. And when you start here, um, you can watch three, um, I think, three um, very short videos about um, how to use Big Interview. Learn is um, a, a tab where you're gonna either do fast track learning. So say you have, you know, you get the call and you have an interview tomorrow or you have an interview in a few days. You can go to some fast track video lessons um, that give you an idea of what a, you know, a, a potential question will look like for you. So let's just take a quick look at that. Um, so if we go to On what you did that was above and beyond here, accomplishments, competencies, all of it tailored to what's relevant for the job you're interviewing for. So this is an eight minute video about the question, tell me about yourself. So this is a really, really typical question that you could potentially get on any interview. So this is an interview um, question that you will get if you are going for an entry level um, job or if you're going for a, you know, a doctorate degree type of job. Tell me about yourself is so, so typical and you really want to prepare for that. So here is a way that you can do that. And then this tab here is what I was referring to, where you can actually record yourself um, answering questions. So he, here are the top 10 questions for general interviews um, that you will potentially be asked. You can even choose the level of the interviewer. So if you want just a standard interview, standard level interviewer, you would click standard. If you want a challenging interviewer, you're gonna hit Freddie here. So he's gonna ask you some challenging questions. And if you want a really tough interviewer, someone who has more of like a tough demeanor, you're gonna practice with Pam. So it's a really great tool for you to get asked a question, answer the question, and then actually videotape yourself answering the question. And then again, you can delete it, you can share it, um, and you can keep it. You could do whatever you want with it. Okay, so this is a free service that, you know, we just got, we're really excited about, and it will really, really help you, um, not only today, but when you're interviewing again in a year's time, and you might find, you know, another position that you want to interview for, this is a great tool for you to keep going back to. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the presentation here. Okay. Okay. So just to review, that's, you know, becoming familiar with big interview is, is really, really going to help you in the interview process. And this is just a quick, you know, five step process on how you can, you know, make the most of it. Again, this is a presentation that I will forward on to you so you can always tap back into. And it will also be on that canvas shell that I had mentioned. Um, so you know, real quickly, the typical interview styles. Um, again, this is something that that um, software can help you with. 
but what we see, you know, entry level positions, a traditional resume review is really, really typical. And that's where, you know, you send somebody your resume, they're looking at your resume when they're interviewing you, and they're asking you traditional questions. They could be, you know, chronological order type of questions, um, questions about your different job experiences, or maybe a class that you've taken that's on your resume. You know, those are very basic, um, you know, that's an, a very basic interview format. A behavioral interview or behavioral interview questions are questions like, you know, tell me about a time when you resolved a conflict in the workplace. Or, you know, it might be something a little more specific to your, um, to the job that you're um, applying for, like say you're an interior design major, tell me about a project that really inspired you and why. Um, so they're really asking you to, you know, show how your behavior will translate into the workplace. So those are questions that I would definitely suggest preparing for um, because they are really typical for entry level types of positions. A technical interview or technical interview questions are really asking you about you know, the software that you might be working with. Um, it, it might be asking you very detailed questions about things that you have said that you know, or things that you, you know, need to know for the job that you, you know, basically have the skill set for. So this might be, you know, again, uh, typical for somebody who is applying for an x-ray technician type of role, uh, respiratory therapy, nursing, you might want to have to speak about, you might have to speak about, I should say, um, you know, again, those applications, software, technology that you work with. Um, so small or large group interviews, not as typical for your entry level positions, but they do occur. Um, so you might walk into an interview thinking that you're just meeting with one person um, and you might be sitting down with multiple people. You know, that can happen and that's something that you want to prepare for and we're going to show you later on how to prepare for that. Um, but knowing and asking the interviewer or the human resources person who contacts you about setting up the interview, knowing what type of interview you're walking into is really important. So if you ask that question and you absolutely can ask that question, can you tell me the interview format that, you know, that I'll be experiencing or can you explain to me the inter interview format? You will know and it actually, you know, tips off to the human resources, per human resources person, hey, this person is doing their homework. They want to be prepared. Um, so I would definitely suggest asking the question and then you're going to prepare for it. So if you know there's going to be a large group interview or a small group interview, you're going to bring multiple copies of your resume and you want to actually ask, well, who are, who will I be interviewing with? You want to, if you can get a name or if you can get a department that you're going to be interviewing with, it, it will just serve you better. And again, it shows that you are um, really prepared. Uh, so the last type of interview, you know, format um, that we have seen, but again, not as typical is more of, um, it's called a stress interview. And it's where, you know, the person who's interviewing you might want to see how you do under a stressful situation or being asked a stressful question. So a question could be a little more abrupt. It could be something like, you know, um, I don't see that you're qualified. Can you explain to me why you should get this job? You know, something it sounds, it, it might sound a little abrupt, but really they want to catch you off guard um, and they want to see how you will, you know, relate to that type of questioning and again, how that would translate into the workplace. For all intents and purposes, I think for most entry level positions, you will see a traditional resume review thrown in with some behavioral interview questions, maybe technical interview questions. I don't think you need to worry too much about the other two, but definitely something that, you know, just to keep on your radar. So typical interview questions. Um, this is, you know, a very short list of what you can review again in big interview. Tell me about yourself. 
Um, this is something that you're going to want to practice, and I would practice it in a bullet point format. You don't want to have yourself completely rehearsed because then you might sound like a little robotic. Um, but you know, you want to explain who you are, why you're qualified, and why you're there. So a tell me about yourself question um, doesn't shouldn't be a regurgitation of your resume. They already see your resume. They have all of your credentials. Um, but it really wants, you know, what it should do and what the interviewer wants you to do is, is explain why you should get this job. You know, what qualifications do you have? Typically, it's like a 30 second answer, 30 second to a minute answer. Um, and it's something that you can practice. And, and if, if, if you're going to practice any question, it's the one that I would definitely suggest practicing. Um, tell me about a time when, again, that's that behavioral interview question. Why do you want to work here? You know, a really simple question, and it could be a simple answer, it could be a very complex answer. What they're really looking for is to see, have you done any research about the company that you are about to work for? Um, do you know anything about them? They really want to know that you do. So definitely do your, do your homework there. Answering questions like, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Um, they want answers. So they don't want you to say, you know, for weaknesses, you know, I don't have any. Um, everybody has a weakness. What they're looking for is that, you know, you can, you can talk about a weakness of something, you know, that's human and is real. That is something that you can work on. Um, so, you know, a typical weakness that, that you know, that is typically, you know, talked about during, you know, uh, interviews. It could be, you know, I don't have, you know, uh, the technical experience or the, the techno technical certification that I need right now, but I'm working toward it. Um, you could talk about if you have, if there's like a language barrier, that's definitely something that you can work on. Um, you know, those, those are things that, you know, we, when we talk to recruiters about what they're looking for, that type of question, it, it's something that you can work on. Okay. It's something, you know, we're not perfect. Not everybody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Um, but it's definitely something that you want to show that you could work on. Uh, where do you see yourself in five to 10 years? That's a typical question. Or where do you see yourself growing in this company? So say you're going in for an entry level position, um, but you would really like to someday manage a department or manage you know, a nursing staff or you know, continue on your education. Those are things that they wanna hear um, and, and that you could absolutely talk about. You don't wanna say, well, you know, this is a stepping stone and I wanna to go to XYZ company you know, after a year. You definitely don't wanna say that. Um, but you wanna show that you wanna grow within that company. Uh, and finally, do you have any questions for me? The answer always will be yes. So whether you're doing a phone interview, an in-person interview, or a video interview, you will always get this question. I can promise you, you will be asked this question. And you always want to have a couple of questions in your side pocket for the interviewer. So, you know, it's a little harder to think on your feet when you're in person. Um, you might have a question prepared for yourself, but you might forget it. If you do forget those, you know, detailed questions that you had for the interviewer, ask them about themselves. Ask them about their career path. People love to talk about their career path, especially if they're interviewing somebody. Um, so you can ask them about that. Well, tell me about your career path. How did you wind up at XYZ Company? Um, that's definitely a good suggestion. And then when you're doing the phone interview and the video interview, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, you're gonna have some questions written down so that you don't have that scenario of forgetting. So that's the great thing about you know, doing these not in-person interviews is that you can prepare and have everything in front of you um, and you'll have questions to ask. So definitely, definitely always ask questions. Uh, before I start, I just wanted to, uh, on the in-person phone and video interviews, I just wanted to see if there are any questions at this point. No? Okay. 
all is answered on the chat so far. So um, if anyone has any questions, I mean, you can put them through the chat and we'll be answering them as we go. So just wanted to let you know. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Okay, so um, I just wanna go into today's interview types. So, you know, we have the traditional in-person interview. Um, we're gonna help you prepare for the phone interview and the video interview. Definitely will be a little more common, especially for our graduating students. Um, you might have an, an initial interview via phone or initial interview via video and then a follow-up in-person video, depending. Um, so you want to be able to be, you know, prepared for all three scenarios. So the in-person interview, um, we, we just have a few tips of how you can prepare for that. Um, and, and really, you know, how to get the most out of an in-person interview and, and, and to make the most impact. So it, when you get that interview date and time, you want to give yourself a day or two where you can do a drive-by. Uh, you want to find out where you're going and how you're going to get there. You know, you don't want to rely on, you know, Google Maps or any other type of, you know, navigation device to tell you exactly how long it's going to be on the day of. You really want to give it a shot on your own, just in case there's detours. You don't, don't want to be late. Late's not good. Um, so wearing professional clothing, you know, that is, you know, typically, you know, we could do a whole dress for success, um, you know, workshop in and of itself, but I'll just give you a couple of pointers. Um, so wearing a blazer, wearing a collared shirt, um, you know, wearing a dress, wearing, you know, a sweater with a skirt, all very appropriate. You know, you want to know your audience. So if you're walking into, you know, a very corporate environment, you definitely, you know, if you have a suit, I would definitely wear it. If you're walking into an interview for a more relaxed style company, maybe at a coffee shop, you know, I would still, still definitely wear a blazer, but you could probably get away with wearing something a little more casual. Um, you know, really knowing your audience is very important. And if you have any questions along these lines, I, I know this is difficult, um, because we're trying to cover a lot of information. These are the types of questions that we can answer within a day. So if you have an interview, you know, tomorrow or next week and you really don't know what to wear and you want to run it by us, you know, we can certainly answer any of those questions. Shoot us an email, we can do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom. Um, so in-person interviews, again, avoid wearing too much perfume or cologne or anything that takes away from what you're saying and who you are. Early is, is typically, you know, a half hour, 20 minutes, you, you know, before the interview, you want to be sitting in that parking lot. You want to make sure everything's in place. You want to bring multiple copies of your resume. Um, so the firm handshake and eye contact, this is something that I've always loved to practice in person, but we can't. Um, so I want you to, I know it might feel a little goofy to be practicing these things, but I want you to practice having that firm handshake with somebody you know, that you know, you're safely with these days. It's really important. You don't want to be super, super firm and you don't want to you know, have you know, a very limp handshake. You want it to be uh, firm. Um, it's important and so is eye contact. Eye contact is just as important in a video interview as it is in an in-person interview, um, but it's something that you want to be aware of um, and, and make sure that you're always working on. Um, so lastly, you know, fake it till you make it. Ways in which you can do that is always, always keeping yourself open, you know, in an in-person interview, it's very easy, you know, to cross your arms and sort of give this like persona that you're not confident. And even if you're not, even if you're shaking, even if you're just, you know, wanting this situation to end, and, that, and that's a typical feeling and a very normal feeling to have during an interview, you wanna keep yourself open. You know, giving yourself posture um, during an in-person interview is so important and, and it really will, um, you know, give the illusion that you have confidence, even if you don't at that very moment in time. Um, so the interview prep for a phone interview is equally important. And these are just a few tips and tricks. 
um, that will help you. So you want to make sure that your phone is charged working and not on silent mode. And the reason why is you don't want that phone call to be missed. It's really important that you pick up that phone call. Um, if, you know, an interviewer says that they're going to call you at two o'clock, you want to have, you know, um, everything, you know, intact, um, you know, at least a half hour before. You want to have your resume in front of you and the job description in front of you. So a lot of times interviewers will ask you questions about your skill set. Um, and then they might not ask you something that you think is very important and, and a quality that you have um, that will set you apart from under, uh, other candidates. So that's why it's important to have that job description in front of you. Um, you want to mention some of the things that they're looking for. It's really important that they make a connection with you and the job you know, description and the qualities that they're looking for. Uh, and then you want to just make sure that you're in a quiet place. It's really important, you know, when you're on that phone call that, you know, you're not distracted. Uh, so starting off strong, um, it might sound silly, but you want to pick up in the first or second ring. You don't want to keep that person waiting. Small talk is absolutely okay. Very typical of an in-person interview as well. And it's okay to, you know, ask a couple of questions. How are they doing? You know, um, how's everything going today? Um, and, but you want to keep it brief. You want to make sure there's a level of excitement in your voice. And this is, you know, the drawback of a phone interview. They can't pick up your on your nonverbal cues. They can't pick up on a smile or, an, a, you know, a feeling of excitement that you might show in your body language. Um, but this is something that you have to sort of get across any way you can. So recruiters suggest you know, that, you know, you get up and take a walk while you're on the phone. You know, sometimes when, you know, we're laying around, you know, that comes across in our voice as well. Um, so if you keep moving, you know, your level of excitement for the interview, you know, might spark up. So listening and sounding like you are. So, you know, you can reflectively listen. So that could sound something like, you know, if an interviewer says, you know, our, our company, you know, has 50 to 100 employees. Oh, that's interesting. So it's like a mid-sized company. So they're hearing that you're hearing them. It's important that, you know, you, they know that you are interested and in listening. So doing some of that reflective, um, you know, conversation is really important. So writing down important points from your interview. It's really important that you follow up with the person you're interviewing with, whether or not you're interviewing via phone or video or in person. And the cool part of interviewing, you know, via phone is that you could be writing things down. Oh, talked about, you know, uh, we both like surfing. Talked about, you know, we both, you know, took classes at Brookdale. Um, and then when you follow up, you're going to mention those things. You're going to explain to them, you're going to show them that you're listening, that you've made a connection with that person, and then they will remember you. Okay, so video interview prep. We are entering a new era, right? Uh, video interviews have been going on for a while, but now they just might happen more frequently. And, you know, for our students who are graduating, you know, this might be how you interview for a little bit. Um, so how do you prepare? We're gonna talk a little bit about the technology. We're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, the setup. Um, and again, if you have any specific questions, you know, that we're not covering here, please feel free to ask. So typical, you know, technology for interviews um, done via video, Zoom, Skype, Facebook, there are tons. Um, knowing the technology ahead of time is really, really important. So downloading that app days before, downloading the app or having it up, you know, running on your personal computer so you could practice on it before interview day is really, really important. Uh, one tip is having a backup technology platform if possible. So right now, for example, I'm on my personal computer. But I have Zoom loaded on my laptop, which is also right in front of me, just in case, um, you know, for some reason, like zap, like, you know, things go away on my personal computer. I also have my phone. 
Um, so I have a, a couple of different, you know, ways of having a backup. It's, it's important. And what you can do also is to tell the interviewer, I just want to let you know, you know, I have a backup, um, you know, I have Zoom backed up on my phone just in case, you know, for some reason, you know, there's a, a technical glitch. Again, shows them that you're prepared and that you're thinking ahead. So um, another pointer is, you know, when you get that, that um, invitation to have a video interview, you want to really make sure you check the date, time, and the time zone. So in today's day and age, you could be interviewing with somebody, you know, in the Pacific time zone, in, you know, a, a different, you know, time zone that you're going to have to accommodate for. So just knowing and making sure that you've got the right time is really, really important. Okay, so as far as, you know, uh, technology, so the feedback that, you know, we've learned through Big Interview and also from, you know, some local recruiters is that store-bought cameras, you know, with the built-in microphones really have better quality when you're doing video interviewing than laptop computer, computers. If you can avoid using your phone, please do so. Um, so, you know, knowing, you know, what technology works best is, is important. If you have some options at home to practice with, I would definitely do that first. Um, and being in a spot where your network is most consistent is, is important. So this, you know, store-bought camera, you know, these can be pricey, but you could go to Staples, you could go, you know, to any, you know, store um, where they sell these things, and there's a range, and they're all pretty good. Um, so, you know, definitely something that you might want to consider, even if, you know, you're not just going to be video interviewing, if there's a remote component to or a virtual component to the job that you're applying for. For example, if they say, you know, you can work from home for, you know, two days a week, or if you're going to be working remotely, if you can invest in, you know, a store-bought uh, camera that you can install on, on top of your PC, you know, apparently the technology there is better than using the, you know, the, um, the, the video camera within the computers. So prep setup for the video interview, again, finding that quiet space, um, having questions written down uh, beforehand, and then having the clean backdrop. Um, so you want to shut windows to avoid outside noise and you want to find a room that has, you know, a, a very consistent uh, lighting source. So we'll talk about that next. So you want to be up pretty close. So this might not feel, you know, comfortable or natural. And this is why it's really important to really try this out. Um, you know, don't wait 10 minutes before the interview. Don't even wait like a half hour before the interview. I would definitely try this out like the night before. Um, and then, you know, very similar to like, say you're taking a selfie, for some reason everyone puts their hands up here. Well, there is a reason because I guess that vantage point of, you know, looking um, up, being looked at from, you know, from upward is more optimal. So this, this, video, this image here, you know, hopefully gives a better visual of, of me trying to explain this. Um, you want to make sure the camera is at or above eye level, if that makes any sense. So there's ways to do that. So right now, again, I'm on my personal computer and I've got a couple of books stacking up um, the, my webcam setup, okay? Um, and the lighting as well. So this takes time. Um, you can put a lamp just behind and to the side of your computer. Um, you know, one fashion icon has recommended putting like a white paper or a tablecloth on the table in front of you to give a little bit of lift or brightness to your face. Um, and you, and, and this is really important. You want to practice, but you want to practice the lighting within the app you're interviewing with. So I've practiced, you know, lighting um, and I'll be on my computer and I'll be, you know, using the, the camera within the computer and then I'll turn on Zoom and the lighting is actually completely different. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're in that app. So just to give you an example of how much lighting can affect 
So this is me with like this like tiny little camera and or I'm sorry, this tiny little light. And this is me without it. Um, so it really will make a difference of how the interviewer sees and perceives you. Jen, I just wanted to add in, I, I think I also have this issue because my, uh, just make sure your light actually works because mine goes in and out sometimes. So I don't know yeah. if you notice this, but that's not me turning off my light. It just goes right. out. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's a big difference. Um, and so then at one point I looked like I was in a horror movie in a meeting and it was like doing this and I'm like, that's not my power. So just make sure your lights are actually working. You'd never think that that was important, but it's super important because it's very distracting. Absolutely. <laughs> and now I can't get it back on. So anyway, I'm in darkness now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the cool thing about the video interview is that, you know, this is me. This is me uh, 30 minutes ago. And, and this is the image here. I've got the, I've got the weird lights. I've got like my son's, you know, headlamp from camping. I've got clutter, right? There's clutter everywhere. Um, but it's what your, you know, the perception that you're giving the final product is what's most important and, and really what you can get away with in the video interviewing world. So, you know, similar to an inter in person interview, you really want to be aware of your body language. You want to sit up straight and don't cross your arms. It's such a different image when you're crossing your arms and not sitting up straight. You want to ask the interviewer questions, like I said, but if there's a technical issue, it's okay to ask them to repeat a question, make sure that you do, um, smiling, obviously. Um, and then moments of pause are okay. It's, very, it's a very natural tendency for all of us to fill those moments of pause. I do it constantly with ums and you know, other sorts of you know, sounds or, or words like, so I do that one a lot. Um, you know, it's something that you really want to be aware of, especially during the interview process and just knowing and practicing that those, those moments of silence are really, really okay. So for any of the interviews that we talked about today, the phone, the in-person, the video, the art of following up is so incredibly, incredibly important. And there's many ways that you can follow up the email, uh, handwritten notes, you know, they might seem like a thing of the past, but they're really, really not. It's, it's pretty much the most impactful thing that you can do as somebody who's interviewing even today. Um, so, you know, it's something that I would do almost immediately. So if you walk out of an interview, you know, within a, a, the next few hours, up to 20 to 24 to 48 hours, send an email thanking the person that you interviewed with. Really, really important. And, and get something handwritten in the mail. Um, if you don't hear anything, from that email within five to seven business days, they might tell you when you leave an interview, you know, you expect to hear from us within a week. Well, if you don't hear from them within a week, within five to seven business days, I would definitely follow up. A phone call is fantastic. An email, absolutely. This isn't the time to do the handwritten note. The follow-up should be, you know, a more deliberate. Um, and in the meantime, I would, you know, you're, you're in this, phase where you might be job searching. When you job search, you know, there's a lot of highs and lows to this. You might leave an interview and feel, I got the job. There's no doubt in my mind I got the job. And then for some reason, you don't get the call. Keep interviewing. Keep yourself busy during this process. Keep getting yourself out there. We have, you know, tools to help you with that. We have an online job database, and I'll show you how to get there in a minute. Um, but, you know, there's many ways that you can job search. If you haven't started, we can certainly help you, you know, walk through that. You know, we do have our own internal database, but there's so many ways that you could job search today outside of our, you know, internal resources to keep yourself, you know, connected um, in, until you get, you know, whether or not it's the offer or the, or the decline. You want to keep yourself out there and marketing yourself. So our office is, you know, obviously we're not in the office right now. We are on the Linkcroft campus, Mac 105, but you know, we're here virtually and, and we're doing everything that, you know, we were doing when we were in person. 
Um, you know, we have this big interview uh, software and application that you can use, but, you know, contacting us via email to set up one-on-one -on -one appointments. You can connect with us, you know, via Instagram and LinkedIn, but, but really any, any communication with us during this time will help you. So, you know, we're, we really encourage you to keep reaching out to us in, until, you know, you get that, that first interview. Okay, so that is our video virtual interview uh, presentation. But you know, we want to answer any questions that you might have, either about the interview process, quest typical questions, you know, how to get there. Um, we have a few minutes, and we can certainly do that now. Jen, I think we also, I think we just wanted to point out too, like the the background, you talked about the background a lot. I mean, I don't know if anyone can notice, but that's totally my bed back there. Like I would not do my interview for a position here at this little station that I've created. I probably would try to find some kind of a blank wall or a painting, um, or I would be fancy like Bill Kelly. And I don't know if anyone can see his screen, but um, he's got like our logo on the top and his fancy background. That's very cool it's like a yeah. green screen um so you know i don't know bill if you wanted to talk about your process that you did for that but that's a very professional looking background yes please do bill <laughs> right yeah it's really easy but like sarah said you don't have to have a green screen any type of um you know blank background something that removes any distractions because really it's your opportunity to showcase yourself uh that's the important part but um, also, by setting up a proper lighting, a proper background, you're also s telling the um, employer that you have these professional skill sets or awareness. So, you know, you're sort of the subtext is you're translating that you are aware of these things and you find them of value too. Actually, one other thing, I did invite Ashley, who's an alumni, she has a lot of intern experience um in for interviewing i don't know if she was able to make it on the call so ashley if you are on on the zoom meeting just let yourself be known i would just add about those virtual backgrounds that if they're not set up right they can cause artifacts on the screen and that can be distraction like your shoulder disappears and things like that so you get you should test it out ahead of time yeah practice 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 like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> right see can anyone see that I don't know if, if you can tell because I've now changed my background, but it is very distracting. <laughs> okay, I don't think I don't think I see Ashley's name on the screen, so I'm not sure if she was able to log in. Um, but does anyone have any questions for us? I mean, we're here to answer any questions that you might have about interviewing in general, but um, you know, specifically virtual or over the phone. Um, I know I read an article that um, a lot of stores are seeing an uptick in very professional tops, but not bottoms. <laughs> so I just want to point out that you feel a lot more professional if you are fully dressed professionally from top to bottom, even with shoes on. Um, I feel like I haven't worn shoes in a very long time, but I know that, you know, if I was going through an interview, I'd want to feel fully dressed for the interview, even if I knew no one was going to see my, my pants or my shoes. Um, so just a tip, I don't know, but for some reason I keep thinking like, I'm going to wear professional pants if I was in an interview. Um, you know, my husband's in his like sweatpants on the bottom and like professional top on top, but I still feel like an interview, you want to feel um, fully professionally dressed. So I don't know, just keep that in mind. That's my weird tip. <laughs> Good point. Well, thank you everybody for coming. I, I really appreciate it. And we're, we're going to have this presentation, you know, on the canvas shelf for sure. Um, I can send, you know, a, a, a consolidated summary of some of the, you know, key points, especially, you know, our contact information and how to continue to reach out to us, you know, as students and alumni. And good luck with everything. And we're always here if you need us. And we'll stay on the line if anyone has an individual question that they want to ask. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.